Hi, welcome to Dogen demo for release 1027. Uh, as you probably noticed, I've taken away the music. Uh, mainly I, I always program with music, to be honest, but um, Google and licensing and YouTube and stuff is just a bit of a pain, painful experience. Um, sometimes you get videos that are actually you can't even play the videos anymore because of copyright issues and so on. So from now on, sadly, uh, there can't be any music anymore. So uh, going back to the actual theme at hand, uh, so the release uh, 1027. So as I mentioned, the release now it's a bit of a long release. Really, it's taken us a long time to get this out. Um, main reason why is because of, uh, sort of life is getting in the way, really. I guess of coding, which is usual. Um, but you know, uh, we still managed to get a lot of stuff done. And whilst it wasn't exactly uh, what we wanted, we, you know, it was still a very positive re release, really. Uh, so we're just going to quickly go through it. There's no, there was, n there's no user-facing features really. So we're just going to spend some time looking at the features uh, from a coding perspective and talk a little bit about the logical physical space, I guess. Excuse me, because that's really the thing we're trying to uh, sort of get across here, trying to mold, I guess, over these last few releases quite a few releases even. Um, so let's have a quick look at what we've done this release then. So the first point we need to discuss is the identification model. So what I've done is uh, I've got a dia here with the identification model. Um, and as I mentioned in the release notes, what we try to do with it is we try to extract a few items that were common to a number of models. Well, what I'll just do is I'll, I'll just demonstrate this by opening the models. So let's we'll start with the codec model, which is the new name for the injection model, as we shall see in a minute. We also need the logical model, and we also need the physical model. Uh, let's just make this a little bit bigger, because I think it's easier to view them uh, when they're a little bit bigger. Uh, let's go for 150. Okay, let's make it smaller. Right, so... Um, as I say, um, we had a number of um, sort of entities in these models that were common um, and needed to be used across models. So I'll just give a couple of examples. Uh, the one that's most common uh, is just identification, just basically trying to, tr to figure out the name of a type and uh, where there is such a thing, a short ID and in addition to that, also knowing where things come from, which we call provenance in, uh, in the language of Dogen. So these three themes are recurring in a lot of places. And unfortunately, we can't use the same naming scheme across the different types of model. It would be really nice if there's one way to identify elements across the multiple models we've got. But different models have got different requirements. So from a codec perspective, a name is something really simple. So if you go back to identification model, you look at a codec name, interestingly enough, we seem to uh, have some minor display issues here. Um, so if I look at what we call a name, uh, in this particular case I think we just called it name altogether, and this name uh, is very, very simple. It's, it's got two properties, which is a simple name and a qualified name. And that's sufficient from the perspective of a codec, because in a codec, uh, the codec is effectively just the input format that we receive from an external representation. And pretty much every single um, external format supports uh, at least a simple name, and in most cases both a simple and a qualified name. And that doesn't really have much of a topology as such, uh, by default, uh, no, not by default, but by design really, because remember, in the codec model, we want things to be really simple. This is sort of the entry point to Dogen. So the topological space here is a very, very trivial space. As we enter the more complex representation, which is the logical representation, here we definitely want a topology. Um, and that topology could be fairly complex. So we have a number of elements. Um, you probably are familiar with these now. Represented across all these representations. Structural. Um, and all sorts of other representations. And in, the in here, the topology then is characterized by, um, let's have a look, characterized by uh, the fact that there is an ID for starters. Um, and then this, this topology, as I was saying, 
is um, if I could find it. Here we are. Now this main tree. I'm sure we can locate it at some points. Should be oh, here we are. There's the location. So as you can see here, there's the notion of an external module, which are external to the, the logical model. Uh, the model modules, which describe the model itself, and then internal modules within in the model. And in certain cases of certain entities, um, the element itself. So for instance, an attribute is part of an element. So as you can see, the, the, um, the logical location that identifies the name is actually quite a complex topological space inside of the logical model. And then, once we, f once we then hit um, physical space, the name, it's, it's again different. Um, in the physical space, uh, the structure of the name is very, very s much, much simpler. It's not quite the same as the codec, interestingly enough, um, but it's similar. We need a simple name, and we also need an ID, the physical ID. And uh, the physical ID, as it happens, is actually a representation of a path, because the thing that uh, is unique in terms of a physical name is, is how we're going to write this physical uh, element to the file system. And so um, there's loads and loads of different entities, and all these entities have got different requirements in terms of identification. Uh, I just mentioned sort of the, the, the model side of things, but of course there's also the metal model side of things. So for each of these you would find that there is um, a logical meta-ID, which identify things like such as object and so on, there's also a, log a physical meta-ID. Um, and then, of course, there's the logical physical, metaphysical ID, which combines the logical and physical space. So as you can see, there's just to with this very simple uh, notion of identification, we end up with a very large number of types. And then for good measure, and this was more um, sort of a, a logical consequence of the approach rather than um, something we actually wanted to do, we ended up moving the name trees as well into the d identification because the name trees are literally just collections of names um, and the name trees, if you remember, are used by attributes. So we ended up moving that as well because um, it just seemed natural to keep the name trees together with the names. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that was the best decision but it, it just sounded odd to have the name trees in one place and the names in another. Um, together with that, in addition to just pure um, identification. There's other identification like things like tagging and labeling which are also quite quite sim uh, directly related to um, identification. Uh, similarly there's a the notion of provenance and provenance is related to naming in the, no in the idea that um, and this is also known as tracing in some, uh, some uh, um, model driven engineering environments the idea that as you are going through a pipeline and as you are being projected across all these different spaces, uh, you are keeping track of where you come from. Um, so if you are inside of the logical representation, you re you're going to have a codec provenance. And if you're inside of a physical representation, uh, you're then going to end up having the logical and the codec um, provenance. So with this, we can trace our metamodel elements all the way back to wherever we got them from. And so um, altogether, the the identification model was actually quite a nice encapsulated model uh, and it, it seems to uh, really help uh, with what we're trying to do. However, as I explained in the release notes, the slight problem was in our sort of uh, quest to make the code the code cleaner, we also decided to introduce primitives. So as you can see here, um, instead of just calling a model ID string, uh, we tried to be clever and we created all these things such as model IDs and SHA-1 hashes and codec IDs. These are distinct types using uh, a doge and primitive. And really they're just trivial wrappers around strings really, but um, the good thing is that it, it the type system now distinguishes between these different types. Uh, and so that means that um, we don't really have an issue anymore of conf confusing, conflating, uh, say, a logical meta ID with, say, a, lo a physical ID, for example, or anything like that. Um, so that's really a good thing. The downside of it was that we ended up spending a very, very large amount of time going through every single bit of the code that used strings to represent all these types. Um, and for each of these, we had to then go and fix. And, and also, we detected a few errors where we were not doing the right thing. Now, uh, you may say we didn't quite do a perfect job. So for example, you see here, we still represent um, the locations as strings. Perhaps we should really have a facet ID or something like that. 
Um, we thought that was taking it a little bit too far. Um, perhaps at some point we'll revisit that decision, but for now, as you can see, there's still strings at the bottom of, uh, of the identification system. Um, but all in all, we were quite happy with it. Uh, this seems to be now a very um, cohesive model with a role, a very good role, uh, very well defined responsibilities. Um, mostly, there's a couple of things like, for example, technical space, which is here at the moment, but it's more for expediency rather than because it belongs here. Um, model type could also be argued. Uh, but all in all, it's not too bad. And then uh, we put a set of associated helpers, which seem vaguely to be connected, such as builders and so on. Some of these types are limitations, of course, of Dogen at present. This probably should be part of it. These are just functions that should belong to the to the uh, types themselves. But of course, we can't really um, we can't mix and match generated code with handcrafted code. So um, you know, these things are just sort of classes on their own. Um, and uh, yeah, all in all, I think that was quite a quite a good cleanup. I think a very satisfying cleanup that seems to make a lot of sense. Um, it did take a lot longer than expected, and of course, we weren't really kind of this was not really part of the sprint's mission. So as a result, we ended up um, spending a lot of time um, sort of in a spike, I guess you could say. Um, but Another way of looking at it is that everything is a spike, really, in this mission to clean up the world. So um, it's hard to know where we're still doing the right thing and where we're getting a bit lost and sidetracked. It seems to me that we are doing the right thing with this identification cleanup, so I think that's a good thing. So we move on to the next uh, topic in this release, which was to rename injection to codec, another cleanup. Um, I mentioned on the release notes, uh, so we've been calling this model injection, and it has been a little bit annoying to call this injection. The reason why is um, the idea was originally that there was uh, an injection model and an extraction model. And this was to model the notion that you enter the technical space and you exit the technical space, the extraction being the exiting point. Um, that's when we used to conflate the notion of model to text transforms versus a model to model transform. Now we understand these things really well. It seems clear that uh, injections, uh, well, extractions in model to text are not really the same thing. In the sense that, of course, converting a model to text is an extraction from a technical space to another, but really it's just a model to text transform. That's really how the domain terminology goes. An extraction really is more like when you take a, a model in one representation, convert it to a model in another representation. And as it happens, we tend to uh, handle both uh, the injection and the extraction from the same model. Uh, and for that, we tend to create things like uh, decoding transforms and encoding transforms. Uh, and so because of that, it didn't really make a lot of sense to call this injection, because of course you're injecting and you're extracting. Um, so instead we decided to call it Kodak, uh, which now is much more, I mean it's not entirely in keeping with um, MD terminology, we haven't seen the name Kodak anywhere, but at least it's in keeping with the logic that the model has two responsibilities, uh, coding and decoding. Um, and it was a very easy thing to do, it was a very, very short story, it didn't take us too long, and it really cleaned things up. Those are the key stories, really. Um, the rest of the stories are all related to this notion of the logical physical space. So what we'll do is we end this little um, demo come chat by talking about the logical physical space. Uh, for that, probably we want the text model. Now, the text model is still uh, not quite where we want it to be, but it's kind of getting there. Um, so at present, what the text model does uh, not in the text model, this is the text model. What the text model does is um, it is sort of the top level um, abstraction, I guess, uh, to call the, um, the back ends, which are sort of the, the, the different implementations. Um, so there is an implementation for C and one for C. Sharp. The idea being that for each technical space, there's a back end with it, associated with it, and you're supposed to pass that back end this model that's ready to be converted into text. And what we've learned over time, very painfully, is that um, inside of the text model, the, 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 the real representation that's required to provide you with a way to create the text representation 
is a representation is somewhere in between the logical and the physical space. Um, it is requires the logical space because of course you've got all the mo entities as you're modeling them, but it also requires the physical space because you also need to already start the projection of the logical elements towards the physical representation. In other words, you need to take a logical element and you need to start to think about the different files you're going to generate out of that logical representation. Uh, the reason being that the process of generating the text um, requires certain properties to be mapped and those properties are then used as input by the text transform. So if you look at a physical model for instance, um, you'll see that the physical model contains um, associated properties such as for example the, the calculation of enablement um, such as for example uh, all of the meta model properties which are in effect variability associated with a given meta model uh, in the physical domain and all these properties need to be computed and need to be sort of um, uh, they need to exist in this kind of transient world in between logical and the physical world which we call the logical physical um, space and so the more we progressed, the more we understood that there was no need to create a such a thing as a text model because the text model is in effect a logical physical space is the point at which we need all these things and, and uh, so we gathered the requirements for that text model and it seemed that we needed, well, we needed to remember the logical model as it was in logical space we also needed to start constructing the physical model and we needed to create this mapping between the logical element and the physical region of the logical physical space that goes with along with that element. And once you've got all of this really um, in a nice clear mapping as you see here um, it's very easy to then just supply these things to the transforms. Now of course uh, we're still not doing the right thing at present. We are still uh, in the midst of a very very long cleanup which we could have a quick look. Uh, as you can see here uh, we still have all of this sort of legacy code here um, all to do with calculations of things such as paths, um, helpers, include guards and so on. And that's really the target of this cleanup that we're doing at the moment. We're trying to understand how all of this that was hacked to fit specifically uh, the, the technical space, in this case the C++ technical space, and in this particular case the C-sharp technical space. How do you model this in a general form uh, such that it fits the logical physical space? and for each of these things we kind of slowly, one at a time, we're moving them across we are um, trying to understand what it really means in a properly modeled world uh, clean it up correctly uh, see these implications across the logical model and the physical model and the logical physical model and, and in terms of all the transforms that we have um, for example if you look at the physical, mo the logical model you see there's a very complex pipeline here uh, probably not very visible at just take it, make it a bit smaller. You see, there's a, a large number of transforms here in the logical um, domain, and you see that also in the physical domain. Uh, again, we have chains of transforms here doing its thing. And so, the job, the ask really is at the moment is as we are learning about this logical physical space, is to try to take away the things that we modeled with really hard coded, really. Uh, how does that actually get modeled correctly? So, for instance, you see there is a representation of a model here inside of text.ctp. Uh, this is really, really a, a logical physical model. Uh, so we have to start. Uh, well, we are we are moving across very, very slowly properties from this mo these models here over to the right places. So it's, it's a difficult thing to do uh, because for ev almost for everything we do. So, for example, uh, for the last couple of sprints, we've been looking at just paths, paths and dependencies. And because of paths and dependencies, we have bumped into huge, huge amounts of things such as identification cleanup, the code cleanup, um, many, many, many things, uh, metamodel properties and so on. So sometimes it's a bit of a difficult thing to do because um, you're trying to, to get on with something very obvious, such as cleaning up this class, but um, in conceptual terms it's actually not obvious at all. Um, but nonetheless, it's there is ask and it's actually quite interesting thing to do, you just have to keep grinding uh, until you get to where you want to go really. And that's pretty much it for this sprint. Um, we'll see you in sprint 28. Thanks for watching.